Yo, yo. It's Coda, a.k.a. Coda the Friend. I'm a hip-hop artist from Brooklyn, New York City. I've been doing it for a few years, but this is what I do. This is who I am. This is where I'm from. You feel me? Um, I rap. I make music for a living. I don't have a day job. You know, shout out to all my fans. Shout out to everybody that supports me. This is Quality Control, episode one. Quality Control 101, you dig? This is for every artist that has ever been told by a blog or a writer, we'll pass on this one. This is for every artist that has been in a label meeting or a meeting with some kind of company, a distribution company, and they told you that your music was unmarketable and that you were unmarketable. This is for every artist trying to feed their family on a nine to five and make music at night because that's what they gotta do or make music early in the morning before their kids wake up. This is for y'all. This is for every artist that's in their car listening to the radio and the DJ just keeps on playing trash. This is for every artist that's fed up with the bullshit and just wants to make good music and eat and just wants to do good in life and just like everybody else and live a normal life and just, you know, make their art because this is what the fuck they were born to do. What we're going to be doing here is reviewing blogs, media outlets of all sorts, magazines, writers. We're going to be reviewing radio personalities, DJs, nobody is safe. Nobody safe from this bitch. You know, it's all good though. It's all love. We all in this art and music industry together. You know, y'all review us. So I figure we could review y'all motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. It's all love. You know what I'm saying? So don't throw no shade. You know, I ain't gonna throw y'all no shade. I'm just keeping it real, just like y'all keeping it real. You feel me? So a lot of a lot of y'all probably like, yo, who the fuck is you to be talking about all of this? You know, blogs and blah, 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 blah. Like, what experience do you have? You know what I'm saying? So, I'm a D-level celebrity. Um, probably F-level, I don't know. Like I said, I go by the name Coda. I started this whole thing in 2015 with my cousin at the time. Well, my he's still my cousin, but I started it with him. Like, we were working together. And... So I, I dropped one, my first song, which is it was called Customs. Boom. My cousin is a publicist, and so he pretty much got that song, my first, my debut single, out on every every imaginable website you could think of, like short of like Double XL and Billboard and stuff like that. I was on Vibe. I was on. Um, I was on Vibe, I was on Pigeons and Planes, I was on Global Grind, and just like tons of other websites. So I had never had any success like that. So I'm like, oh shit, that kind of like, you know, I got validated by a whole bunch of, you know, blogs. So I figured that I was lit, you know, I figured that, that that's how my whole career was going to go. So I was, I had a rude awakening when I realized when I put out my second joint and it only got picked up by like maybe one blog or whatever so at first i thought that that's how it went like yo you get blog love and then you just blow up and people start fucking with you that's not how it goes i learned that quick you know i kept putting out music kept putting out music and it was a slow grind um on i put out my first project it, pre- it premiered on um billboard and that was dope i never i never had anything on billboard so i was just like bugging because of that um it didn't do much for my actual career like because i because i've been doing it for a few years now so i can tell you like what it did and didn't do it probably like people probably heard my name that like in the industry that didn't hear it before so if anything that's what it did it showed people like oh that's this dude code of the friend my name would i guess would be more familiar to them after stuff like that happens so i feel after a while i learned oh, okay so you get on a big blog in industry people see it you know so i get that so that that's a plus that's cool um after that 
Uh, I started working on Paloma Beach, my second EP, and that's really when I um, that's really when I realized, yo, I gotta do this shit myself. Like, I can't rely on a blog to push my shit. I can't rely on a blog to get me out there. I gotta, you know, because they weren't fucking with me like that, you know. And that's just the honest to god truth, and that's okay, yo. Yo, one dude I got a shout out though, my dude Manny from he was at Double XL at the time, and now he's at Hype Beast. But while he was at Double XL, he just supported me OD. Anything I would drop, he would put it on the site, and that was dope. You know what I'm saying? Like I appreciated that, and so I got to I got to shout him out real quick for real. Um, I, I I always felt like a lot of it was because my cousin was pretty much managing me and he had the connection it's all it was all about connections you feel me but i still got to show love and he's kind of the reason why i'm even starting this podcast cuz i heard him on his podcast and he was reviewing one of my songs and i just thought it was dope like he didn't review it in a good way like he kind of was like i'm pretty much a, a rip off of amine and somebody else but in goldlink but i was like all right that's cool at least, as long as y'all talking about me, you feel me? So it was all good. It's all love. You know I me. Mean? I'm 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 not sensitive about the shit. Like it's like I know I make good music, so I don't really got to prove to anybody that, you know, I make good music. I'm just happy that they said my name and boom, here we are. I'm inspired to create this shit. You feel me? Yeah, shout out to Manny at Double XL, but now at Hype Beast. <laughs> Peace. But all right, so let's we got to rewind real quick. Um, let's rewind to when I started my series Lyrics to Go, something I'm really known for on Instagram and YouTube and all that. And pretty much what I did was like, I didn't have any money to do a music video. Like I didn't have any money to do visuals. And I knew I was like, yo, if I want to get followers, I probably had like 2,000, 2,500 followers at the time. And I'm like, shit, like, I need to get my following up. I need for people to be listening to the music because if there's nobody listening, if there's nobody here, if I don't have an audience, then who am I rapping to? So I pretty much was like, all right, since I'm completely broke, I'm completely broke at the time. I got a baby on the way. I was like, this is what I'll do. I'll just uh, prop the camera up, you know, because I'm, um, I'm a cinematographer and videographer i was doing that for years before even like getting back on a microphone so what i did was i took my camera uh i put it i propped it up on the tripod and i wrapped in front of the in front of the camera and i just like and in post-production i would just zoom in very slowly and dramatically and i would put the yellow subtitles under my um at the bottom of the screen and i don't give a fuck what anybody says i started that shit you know what i'm saying like for anybody that doesn't think i started that shit i did i don't give a fuck i never saw any rap videos with that aesthetic before i did it you feel me so you can say whatever you want i started that shit i don't care you know i inspired y'all and it's all good y'all, y'all should just show love and say that i inspired y'all and i inspired the whole generation to do that shit but it's all love you know what i'm saying it's like come on it's no hate get your money bro get your money i'm gonna get mine you feel me i'm gonna keep on going with my shit so boom my lyrics to go series ends up going like crazy on instagram it became kind of a thing for instagram and so i kept using that and i kept kind of repeating that I would and I was grinding my ass off. I would probably do like a video every I was probably shooting like four videos a week and I would drop them periodically. I would drop them every week. Sometimes I would drop them like I would drop twice a week. You feel me? Just cuz just to make the shit happen faster. And I was shooting it all myself. Nobody else was shooting my videos. I was just getting the tripod, putting it up and recording and going, you feel me? And I would make new new I would do different freestyles to different um to different beats that was you know pop either popular or just dope instrumentals and like my following grew like crazy every week it would grow like a thousand followers two thousand followers five thousand followers you know what i'm saying so i went from 2500 followers last year 
to we just reached 70k followers on instagram this year and it's all real it's, i didn't buy one follower you feel me it was all organic traffic you know um i just promoted the hell out of them like i would promote i would market i would get it out any possible way that i can and that's how i came up i stopped focusing on getting my music to blogs and getting writers to write about me because it's like how many times can you hear will pass on this how many times can you put your heart and soul into something and be like you know oh in a blog be like oh will pass it's like i sent my music to pictures and playing so many times to the point where i was just like i right, this is not happening you know what i'm saying this is not they're not fucking with me so this is not gonna happen this way they're not gonna write about me so i pretty much ignored 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 them and just went about my own shit so lyrics to go is still popping i could put one out tomorrow and that shit would go crazy you feel me <laughs> um we're talking about the time I probably had like 3,000 youtube subscribers now i got like 30,000 plus um you know it's lit so um that's how I, that's how i got to where i am now and now i just did a tour with lupe fiasco that's all thanks to my manager sean he set that up he hooked me up with that and then we together set up the east coast tour and the midwest tour and that was dope that was a whole vibe we got to reach out to a lot of fans and really i'm one of those artists that's just like trying to make a living and just eat and do what i do while i make music you know what i mean i don't really care about the glitz and glamour the fame i don't care about parties and things like that and being noticed like that i just care about making good music and putting it out to the world being a positive influence on human beings and you know reaching out to people and making music and making a living so that's just some fun facts about me uh, i just did a, a tour with rakim um I'm about to do a European tour. Uh, I'm about to do a, a festival in South Africa. Uh, I just did my own tour of the mid, like the Midwest and the East Coast. And when I go to Cali, they show me mad love. When I'm in LA, when I'm in Oakland, wherever I go, Ventura, they show mad love and I love y'all and I love the fans. Y'all appreciate everybody that listens to my music and fucks with me. Y'all help me feed my son. Y'all help me do what I have to do. And I just cut out the middleman and go straight to my people. You feel me? Like, and so, yeah, I appreciate everybody that's been with me up until this point. But it's a new fucking day. And I got to talk to y'all about it. So that's pretty much who I am. And that's how I came up. And this is where I am now to the point where I'm touring and I'm in different places and doing different things. And. I'm living my life and people are streaming my music. I got a million, I'm over, I got millions of streams, you know, over all platforms and it's, it's dope. You know what I'm saying? I'm independent. Um, shout out to all my independent artists out there. Shout out to all the managers out there that are managing independent artists and on that indie grind and, you know, paying their rent and feeding their kids and just doing their best. You feel me? This is for y'all. This is for everybody that's just really trying to make it. This is for everybody that's making it that wants to help other people figure out how to do it because at the end of the day, there's people out there hungry, you know, and there's people out there. So one thing for the blogs to understand and for the writers to understand that these artists, they don't have shit, you know what I'm saying? A lot of these artists don't have shit. So while you're, you know, behind your computer talking about, you know, with your, with your salary job, or your freelance job or whatever you're doing it's like you're talking about what artists should do to to pop off or what y'all shouldn't do what artists should or shouldn't do when you try to put artists on blast for you know i'm um, spamming you or spamming your email or spamming you on twitter it's like you got to understand these are coming from desperate people that are desperately trying to feed their family just like you are so kind of it's kind of like how dare you try to put a motherfucker on blast for just trying to get their music out like they don't know any better you know what i'm saying if you don't know any better and you're in a game you're gonna do whatever you can you figure oh look look at this you know look at this um social media shit i could just tweet this motherfucker and see if i could get my shit on the site but obviously that's not how it works all the time but it can work like that 
like let's rewind to when I just started my um when I just started the lyrics to go so let's rewind to when I just started lyrics to go boom I was spamming I was spamming people on Twitter with the video because it was doing so well on Instagram. So I was like, yo, I just got to get it to everybody. So I started at Ingenious. And I saw I'm, I'm tweeting Genius. And I'm like, yo, 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 check out this video. Check out this video. It's fire. You know? And I figured it wasn't going anywhere. So I was just like, fuck it. At one point, I wasn't even going to do keep doing the, the lyrics to go. Because my cousin was pretty much like, all right, it's a good idea. But I don't want you, like, wasting your energy on it. And so... Lo and behold, a few days later, I got an email from my dude, my homie Sean, which is he's become one of my good friends over the years. My homie Sean, he's a scout for Atlantic, for somebody at Atlantic. So I was he hit me up in the, in my um, email and was like, yo, I want you to, you know, come to Atlantic. I was fucking with this, this, this video I saw of you and I want you to come to Atlantic and meet with Riggs. At Atlantic, if anybody in the industry is listening, you know who Riggs is. Boom. Riggs is an A&R at Atlantic, for anybody that doesn't know. So, yeah, that was my first label meeting or anything like that. So, while I'm in the meeting, he's like, yo. So, Sean is telling me, yo, this is how I found out about you. I was at a genius party, and this girl that works at Genius just showed me this video of you like, yo, look at this shit. And he was like, yo, this is dope. And that is what inspired him to hit me up in my email and be like, yo, come to the, come to the, um, the office, come, you know, in the city. So that shit blew my mind. Cause I'm like, hold up, you're hitting me up. I had a, the first label meeting that I ever had was because of some throwaway shit that I just decided to do on the fly just because I was broke and I needed to put something out. You feel me? So that's what it, that inspired me to keep on going. So I kept on going with that shit. Everybody's path is different. It's like I'm tired. I'm tired of people that aren't artists telling artists how they're going to blow up or how they're going to do shit because it's just like everybody's path is different. Like, stop, like, stop stop doing this shit to us stop saying that stop stop trying to say that this is how you make it you know what i'm saying and this is how you don't make it like you know it's like we're really living out here we're really artists we're really out here so it's just like i'm tired of the bullshit like stop trying to control the market stop trying to control the artists artists were here way before you were here and we're gonna be here way after you know what i'm saying so people definitely have to start giving more respect to us the people that are real artists and really out here trying to make it. And that's another reason why we're doing this podcast. You feel me? So, it's all love. Um, we're going to be shedding light on a lot of dope people. My name is Coda the Friend. I'm here for y'all. This is only episode one, just to tell y'all who I am. We're going to be having some dope-ass artists on here to talk about the industry and talk about their experiences and at the end of the day, it's all information to help you and to help people like you, you know. And just for the average listener who wants to, you know, get the, the details on what's going on in this in this crazy ass game. You feel me? So like I said, Quality Control 101. That is the name of this episode. And we will be back next week. Show us some love. You feel me? Follow the podcast right now. I don't know where it will be on SoundCloud or wherever, but it's going to be somewhere dope. And we're going to just, you know, hopefully put it on bigger platforms as time progresses. But here we go. And we're starting it up. My name is Coda. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck about my personal gain. I am here for the people. I don't I'm not I don't even got to put my ad name because I just simply don't give a fuck. You feel me? I make music. That's what I do. I'm here. This is for fun. Like I said, this is for fun. This is for fun and for information. This is for the people. This is for artists because I believe that we are powerful, you know, and we have to understand our power. And we have to understand that the power is in our hands and we have to take whatever power that we get, we have given to this industry. We have to take it back and hold it for ourselves and we have to love ourselves. We have to have some, you know, some dignity and some pride in what we do. You feel me? 
I love y'all. And I'll talk to y'all next week. And we'll be here. And we're going to have some dope guests. And it's going to be more conversation. But for now, it's just me. And I'm just kind of introducing to you what I want to do. And I hope that y'all enjoyed it. And you will learn a whole lot more about the game and a whole lot more about artists and their come up. So until next week, this is Quality Control. Peace.